On this Debaco University video, I'm going to explore the atomic theory of J.J. Thompson. All right, let's get into the atomic theory here of J.J. Thompson. Now, with any scientist, it's always important to understand what time period we're looking at for, for context and development. And here we're looking at the development of this atomic model around 1897 to 1904, when advancements in understanding electricity and matter are occurring. Now, Thompson's experiences, I'll show you here, worked with cathode ray tubes, and that's looking at streams of particles here, looking particularly at the d development of the concept of the electron. Uh, also, around this time period, electromagnetic advancements are being made in electricity. And this is, again, his work here is connected with electrical properties. This is also building on Dalton's legacy, um, looking at Dalton's kind of fundamental units, but um, sought to explain the internal structure based on new evidence of the atom. And Thompson's work emphasized on precise measurements, such as the charge to mass ratio of electrons, which informed his overall model. So this cathode ray tube experiment that he is so famous for, what is it about? Well, he used a vacuum tube, which is uh, indicated right here with two metal electrodes, one um, negative, which is the uh, cathode, and one positive, which is the anode here. And when high voltage uh, was applied, a beam called a cathode ray, as you can see here, was emitted and traveled towards the anode, resulting in this kind of phosphorescence kind of glow here as it hit the end of the tube. This proved that this was real matter and not just energy. So he showed that the ray traveled in a straight line and had mass. So building from this, you can see here a nice straight line. When Thompson applied magnetic fields, he saw that the ray deflected. We can see that evident in this lower picture right over here. Um, so as a result, this bending, where did it bend to? Well, it was bending towards the positive plate, proving that these particles must be of negative charge. If they're repelled from a negative and drawn towards a positive, opposites attract. So that's where he started to call these uh, particles um, electrons. This was the first discovery of, of the subatomic particle, proving that atoms are not indivisible. He also came up with what's called the plum pudding model here. So uh, Thompson envisioned that the atom is a positively charged spherical pudding or the matrix and the negatively charged electrons embedded in the plums or raisins scattered throughout. So we might, you know, the plum pudding is an old kind of piece of uh, dessert here where we've got bread and kind of raisins. Uh, we could think about it maybe now more modern day as a watermelon with the seeds inside the red portion of the watermelon. Now, breakdown of his atomic theory, well, atoms are divisible structures. He proposed that atoms are composites containing small, smaller particles, unlike Dalton's solid idea. He discovered ele that electrons of atoms had in internal components, and the arrangement of the electrons suggested that electrons were distributed in a stable configuration within the positive sphere that we see in the diagram here below. This was later disproven, but this was at least the next step in our progression of the atomic theory. He also thought there was a uniform positive charge that was spread out through the atom's volume, acting to hold those electrons together. Again, a little disproven, but one step closer to the more modern day uh, idea that we have today. Uh, chemical and physical properties, Thompson believed that the number and arrangement of electrons influence an, em an element's chemical behavior and properties, uh, which we still use today, particularly looking at what we call now the valence electrons. Now, how does his uh, kind of theory relate to the modern day? Um, well, there's, you know, there's some comparisons here. Again, we, we're looking at 1904-ish. Um, modern theory places positive charge and most of the mass in a tiny nucleus with protons and neutrons with electrons and orbitals. So while Thompson did feel that there was a positive interior, he felt it was kind of a positive sphere, or now we believe it's nice, a small, dense nucleus. Thompson also overestimated the number of electrons, assuming there was hundreds or thousands per atom. The electrons' behavior, um, electrons occupy orbitals, not static positions, as we, as we see with Thompson's proposed model. Thompson's model also lacked a nucleus. Uh, predictive power, we're looking at uh, bonding and nuclear reactions. Thompson's model really doesn't fit any of that. Uh, but like Dalton, Thompson assumed that atoms were conserved in chemical reactions, which does hold true in chemistry, but not in nuclear processes. So we could see we're getting this one step closer to the development of the uh, accepted modern atomic theory that we use today.